So what's up guys, Jermaine here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I do welcome you here, but if you've been here before, I welcome you back. But I talk all things financial related, stock market, real estate, investing, things like that. I'm a real estate investor out of New York. And today I'm going to be bringing on my brother who's also a real estate investor. He just lives in California, I'm here in New York, but we're both real estate investors that we both believe in real estate investing and you know anywhere throughout the country you don't have to be just a real estate investor just anywhere but today i'm going to have him on so he can give you his story on how he got started also he's going to show you guys a unique way on how he's able to scale in real estate without even using his own money so i hope you guys enjoy this video always smash the like button give this video a thumbs up greatly appreciate it if you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel also check out the links in the description below and i hope you guys enjoy my conversation with my brother all right so what's up vincent talk to me tell me how did you start in real estate because as i tell a lot of people you know you bought your first property before i did i didn't actually get to my second until you were getting in your first. We were actually happened to be buying that around the same time. So how did you actually start? Uh, well, I, I guess it, it really started with a vision, which to be honest, I don't really know where this vision came from. It kind of just came from nowhere. I, I think really more so than anything, I think just growing up in New York and kind of seeing how home prices and rent would increase. And then there was always someone left playing catch up and that person playing catch up was oftentimes the renter versus, versus the owner. So I don't know, I guess I kind of yeah. just eventually came up in my mind with the solution that, all right, well, in order to overcome something like that, I need to own properties. Um, yeah. And so I, I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, and when I went on my first deployment, actually, I remember, so you and I, we, we had a conversation uh, about, you know, hey, you know, you make a little bit of, a little bit of money on deployment, you know, and uh -huh. I know you, you had a little bit because you finished high school earlier than I did, so you had some savings. So I figured it, you know, when I came back from my deployment, we could put our money together and, and buy something together. Uh, and it, at this time, I was stationed in California. I was stationed in Camp Pendleton, so um, a pretty expensive market. Uh, and I know you you was living in New York, so another pretty expensive market. And however, it was 2012 at the time, so we were still kind of experiencing a, a bit of the effects from the 2008 recession uh, as far as housing goes. So housing prices were still, you know, fairly decent. Still, still high, yeah. Well, no, no, it's still low. I mean, com compared to now anyway, but that's a whole nother discussion oh, yeah. as far as, you know, as time goes on, real estate goes up. Uh, so, our, so yeah. Was it like uh, one property that you saw? Was it, was it something that you saw that just clicked or did somebody like, you know, kind of like bring you to it? Like, how did that first one come about? Well, let me get to that. Let me get to that. There, there's, there's a whole buildup actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when I came back from my deployment in 2012, uh, I know that, yeah, you, you didn't want to get into it just then. I guess it was the right time. And, um, but, you know, you, you kind of learn things as you go, right? And, and you and I, we both, read, we didn't really have any mentors in this or anybody who we know who was into real estate investing. We kind of, we learned everything as we went. Yeah, uh, just freestyle. Some were, some were some expensive mistakes, but we learned nonetheless, and lessons yeah. are important. Um, but at that time, you know, in hindsight, hindsight's always twenty twenty. What I learned was you don't need to buy where you are. You don't need to buy where you're at, where you live. Because I lived in California, expensive market. You lived in New York, an expensive market. So in, in my mind at the time, it's like, oh, well, we need to buy something in one of these two places. Um, but the time wasn't right, you know, so... Uh, fast forward to 2014, uh, I re-enlisted in the Marine Corps and I got orders to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh, and the market was just cheap there. So, so basically I still have my deployment money from 2012. I'm just, I live in frugal life. I, I don't, uh -huh. I don't spend a lot of money wearing black t-shirts and stuff. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> so, so I still have my deployment money from 2014 or from 2012 and 2014 when I got to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And I'm just like, wow, 
homes are cheap here. You know, like sub hundred thousands is pretty common. So yeah, actually crazy thing. I just started dating this girl who was a real estate agent. <laughs> ah. <laughs> See, yeah. I never knew this. You never well, told me yeah. this. I never knew this. <laughs> and I and I told her, you know, that I wanted to get into real estate investing and okay. be an agent. So, you know, always be closing. ABC, that was her motto. Yeah. And yeah. even on even on dates, she would show me properties. Like, oh yeah, well, these are some stuff we got, some things we got. Um, okay. You know, it was just conversation. So she was the agent on the first serious, house. Like, I'm sorry. She was your agent on the first house. Yeah, yeah, the first and second actually. <laughs> Okay. So, so, you know, then it, then it kind of turned into, I don't know, you know, when you're dating a person, usually the story goes, oh, one thing led to another and then we got married and then we had a baby, but one thing led to uh-huh. another, then next thing I know, I'm signing an agreement that she's going to represent me as my agent. <laughs> and then, well, y'all both was able to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were both able to make money. And then she, you know, shows me this place. It was actually, uh, this place was actually off market when she showed it to me. Um, and it had a tenant everything. The numbers were great. I, I ran the numbers and I was like, you know what? I'm already, I'm buying this and it already has equity. It has a tenant. It has everything I want. I'd be stupid not to buy it. You know, it was, it was an offer I can't refuse. I felt like it was a mafia deal or something. So I okay. took the offer and, you know. Uh, that's, that's what started it. Have a look back. Yeah. That's yeah. What started it. So right now you are in the course of buying how many homes right now uh well we'll say one and a half because i'm on the contract on one uh i put in an offer for another one but uh uh-huh. they by the time the agent submitted that offer on my behalf uh the seller already signed an agreement with someone else so okay. we're in a hot market right now you know so this year how many properties are you looking to buy right now this, this year? year yeah oh um, uh between two and four i haven't quite decided um but one thing one thing that i did learn though and why i want to why i'm looking to buy two right now in a short time frame you know why i mentioned one and a half is because i learned actually a very important lesson you know as as i mentioned before you and i where we kind of learn this thing as we're going and you know you learn something new every day but one thing that i didn't really realize until recently was that the more homes you buy within, you know, a short window, I believe it's 30 days, uh, the less your credit gets dinged because- Yeah, you only have to use one credit report. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah I did that, um, <laughs> I think with house number three and number four, I bought them on the same credit pool. So I didn't have to pull twice. I only pulled once because I bought them within the same time frame. But I was basically a contract around the same time with both of them. So, like, um, the way you buy in these houses now are in a, a unique way where you're basically not using your own money. You're using money from a previous property, right? Yeah, from our so first ex- property, yeah. So explain that, how you're able to now buy four, potentially buy four properties this year and not use your money. And you actually was able to use the bank's money yeah um so actually well explain i wouldn't even call, wouldn't even call it the bank's money i would call it that the home's money because okay you know it, it, it's equity from the home um i just pulled that equity out and the way i pulled it out it was in the form of a heloc a home equity line of credit uh okay and so I, I, your I, properties I, the price the price appreciated right so much right so where you was able to pull out equity right right so what did you do with that money initially when you pulled it out pulled the equity out once you got it well actually um and and that's the point that i wanted to get into as far as uh, a heloc versus refinancing because a lot of people heard i feel like a lot of people heard about refinancing but uh it's you know distant cousin the heloc a lot of people haven't heard too much about that guy um so basically in my mind you would do one versus the other based on how much of the loan you have left. And that's kind of what I what I took into account when I decided to go with the HELOC. So I only owed a few thousand left on my property. I could have paid it off like on my own if I wanted to. 
Okay. But um, being that I own so little left, I, I figured, well, it makes more sense to pull out a, a separate line of credit, the home equity line of credit, uh -huh. versus do a refinance, which would basically restart my mortgage. Which okay. Like, all right, if I'm all, if I'm all paid off on it, why would I start it all over again? That makes no sense. You know, so I pulled out the 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 HELOC, which, like I said, that's that's a it's, it's equity from the home, but it's a separate line of uh, credit from the home. It's a separate pot of money. So instead of having gotcha. one big pot of money, it's, it's two pots of money, right? So basically, what what I did was, being that I had so little left on my home, I just paid it off with part of the HELOC. And I'm oh, you paid it. off one of your properties, right? And now you have enough left over to where you can still divide that money into like four down payments for four additional properties. Yeah, to well, equity property. does that for you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it just shows the power of real estate to where you just started off with one, but then you grew this to where, you know, just holding that property, cash flowing from rental income that you've been getting on it since you've had it, and then pull out the equity and then use that money to buy four more that are going to cash flow prop money to you. Right. Yeah, that's 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 great. <laughs> that is that's great. Yeah, I I never did that. Um, you know, I I'm sure I have more than enough equity tied up in my properties to do that now, but um yeah, I I never did that. Yeah, well, it's, it's just, you know, another one of the, the tools uh at the disposal of a real estate investor and you know, it's, it's worth taking so how was the, if, if it works as so, your, part of your strategy. So how was the process of like doing that? Is it something like difficult, time consuming? Like how long did this take? Uh, so I was already searching for one of the properties that I'm, or the property that I'm under contract right now on. Uh, my, my dog wanted to come say hi. So I, w I was already searching for that property while I was, uh, in the process of getting the HELOC done. Um, so the, the, the lines are kind of blurred. Uh, but the HELOC, it, it, the HELOC it, process itself. I, I wanna say that process took maybe about a month, but it okay. wasn't a lot of work on my end. You know, it's like applying for, you know, any kind of bank loan. You submit like your documents to the bank, W2, so ninety nine. It wasn't as strenuous as like, um, like applying for a mortgage all over again though, right? Uh, I think it was a similar process because the okay. same, the same documents that you would submit for a mortgage would be the same documents that you would submit for a HELOC. Uh, it's just being that you, you don't have, a, 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 a that added party of a seller involved because then you have to, you know, if, if anything changes as far as the dates, you know, then you have to like you know, uh, amend the contract if, if closing gets pushed out and, you know, seller has things come up and you have to get the inspection all of it. So it's not, it's not that crazy, but as far as like okay. the documents that you need to submit, it's, it's easily just an agreement between you and the lender. And it's more so they want to see that the property did actually appreciate in value to where you can take that equity. Yeah. So the bank, they ordered an appraisal and that was that. Okay. All right. So I mean, like, so like, say like somebody new right now watching this, want to get into real estate investing, what you know now, off of all the experiences that you had, what would be the advice you give them? Uh, well, actually, there's two big things, I think. So I think that one, when it comes to real estate, timing really matters. And I hear this thing that kind of irks my nerves actually quite often. And it's uh -huh. that, oh, I'm going to wait to buy a place. I'm going to wait and see what the market does. I'm going to wait. Like, oh, yeah. The thing is, on average, year over year, you know, over time, property values increase. Yeah. You know, you don't really see too much decrease in property. So, it, it, so the longer you wait, the harder it is to get in. Like, you, I, I even look at the, you know, markets where I've, I've bought places before. And yeah, I could still buy those places again today, but I look and like, there's definitely, you know, a, a, an increase as, uh, as far as the price from when I have bought it, you know, yeah. that, that's, 
That, that's how people actually make, make money in real estate, whether, whether you're an investor or whether you're just, you know, a regular owner, you just own your yeah. residential property. And that's the only piece of real estate you have, because it gets, eventually gets to the point to where, all right, maybe you want to sell that. And no one's going to sell their place for less than what they, you know, paid for it. They may try to break even, but. Unless it's like a 2008 time. crisis. <laughs> but yeah. all hopefully times, that doesn't happen all again. Sometimes you're going to try to sell it for what, More. or, you know, you're going to yeah. try to make a return on your investment, you know? Absolutely. And, and, and what, what people say is, oh, well, um, I'm going to wait for another 2008 to happen. No, you're not. You don't want another 2008 to happen. Because yeah, yeah. when 2008 happened, nobody had a job. So yeah. if 2008 yeah. happens again, guess what you're probably not going to get? A home loan. Why? Because you probably aren't going to have a job. Yeah. You don't want that. So, so basically, like, like that. so basically, like, what you say is, like, don't wait, you know, yeah. for try to potential hiccups in the market. If you right. want to just, just start. Just, yeah, just, just, just do start. what you can. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it, it's like... You, you have to control your own destiny. So do what you can to make sure you get to where you want to be. If where you want to be is buying a home, then take the steps to prepare for it. And uh, just do know, it. My advice, you know, thinking, oh, well, I need these other things to happen in order for me to do this. Like, no, do what you got to do to do that. Yeah. So like my analogy that I, that I oftentimes use. So you remember growing up in New York, you know, a lot of, a lot of the girls, they would play double Dutch. I, I definitely look at real estate as like a double Dutch game, you know. Okay. The longer you wait to, to jump in to that double dutch, you know, while they're spinning a rope, the, the faster they're going to start spinning a rope. And then the, the longer harder, you jump in, the harder it actually The harder it is to get in. Out. Yeah, yeah. You know? so I like that. Um, slow, I like that analogy. The, the, the double dutch theory, you know. <laughs> the longer you wait, the, the harder. I, I think the same thing is with, like, the stock market. I tell people every day you wait to get into the stock market, it potentially gets more and more expensive for you right. you may catch you may catch hiccups in the market here or there but you know you can't time the market you can't time anything you know you, you'll sit there you'll wait a whole decade waiting for a whole market crash to come that may not happen right so you know and then, and then like again when it happens who's to say that you'll be in the position to even benefit from it right you may not be yeah. on the right side of it exactly so yeah, uh, but but the second my my second point of, or yeah my second point of advice would be break the big numbers down into small numbers. Uh -huh. and I, I say that in terms of of buying a place because the big numbers can be can be intimidating. Like let's use a hundred thousand dollars for example. Like if you look at a house and it says oh you know this house costs a hundred thousand dollars that's a pretty intimidating number. A lot of people don't have a hundred thousand dollars laying around. You know? Yeah. Um, and honestly, if you do in, in liquid cash anyway, I, I think that's another conversation because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you, you should have the bulk of your money tied up into cash flowing assets, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so break that down into into smaller numbers. So, you know, say over the over the course of four years, you know, that hundred thousand dollars could be $25,000. So if I'm planning, you know, ahead and I'm like, all right, well, I want to buy a house that's, that's $100,000. Uh -huh. So can I create a four year plan to get there? So for, yeah. in four, over the course of four years, $100,000 becomes $25,000 a year, you know? And, and then from there, you, you can break the numbers down even, even further. So uh, let me just do some quick math right quick. Uh, I'm not a math list, I'm gonna pull out a calculator. Yeah, you was always the better math student than I was. Yeah, I'm just, I'm old now. Eh? <laughs> so, you know, $25,000, if you divide that by 12, because there's 12 months in a year, that's $2,083.33 a month, you know? So uh -huh. that, that's reasonable to, to save, uh, you know, yeah. for some people, not, not for everybody, you know, maybe instead of four years, you do five years or six years, you know, but you still want to get to that end state of, all right, well, I want a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Um, okay. And then, so we could also break down the numbers differently. We could break down the numbers smaller. So $25,000 is 52 weeks in a year. So divided by 52. So that's $480 and 77 cents 
a week that you know okay. a person can say. So it's more so, so just you, like you, understanding. You just, just break down the numbers like oh, four hundred dollars, four hundred eighty dollars is a lot smaller number than a hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, me the, the four hundred eighty sounds less than you know. And, and yeah. if you think about it, we are, we already do stuff like that. We just don't even realize it, you know. So you know, you you buy a car for example, you're paying you know five hundred dollars a month on, on on the payment for the car. But you know, over the course of, of you paying for the car, you actually pay you know like forty fifty thousand dollars. You know, you just broke the number down to a smaller number, and yeah. that's just for the and that's just for the down payment anyway, because you don't, no one you know, or it does happen, but more often than not, when people buy places, they take out loans. You know, you don't need to pay if you buy a place four hundred thousand dollars. You don't need to pay the whole hundred thousand dollars up front. You only need to pay. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that anyway, even if you had the money to just buy it out, right? You know, it's right. better well, getting mortgage. Again, that's another conversation. You know, yeah, the rest uh, of that money could be better, well invested at a higher rate of return. So right. like, so like now you've accumulated a nice portfolio. Like, I, you know, we don't have to say how many homes you have or what you potentially would have at the end of the year once you've acquired everything, but like based off of like the portfolio that you've acquired, would you say your success in real estate now is based off of hard work or luck? I don't believe in luck personally. Okay. Um, I, I would say, you know, there, there, there's an element of hard work there, but there's also the element of, of opportunity and capitalizing on opportunity. Um, and I suppose I guess maybe, maybe the opportunity piece is arguable as to whether that's luck or not, because you got to be in a certain situation in order to, to learn. Yeah. But I think it, I also, always say it's a conversation, combination of two of both. You need a bit of luck to be in the right place, at the right time and capitalize on that. But well, I don't call it luck. I call you don't it put the work in like for it. Tomato, tomato, I guess. Yeah. So yours is you say no luck had nothing to do with it. It was just hard work. Yeah, because it's like all right. So say for example, if I haven't met that real estate agent girl that I dated, we're no longer dating anyway. But um, uh, you know that that was an opportunity. She presented me with an opportunity for a place. You know, great offer. If I haven't met her, would I still have bought a place? Yeah, I would have because it was always it was always my goal. You know, it was always my vision. Yeah. Um, I just saw an opportunity and I capitalized on it. So I would have saw another opportunity or create an opportunity. You know, sometimes opportunities present themselves to you and sometimes you just in a weird way put yourself in front of opportunities. Yeah. I um you know, I always say like, yeah, I always wanted to get into real estate. I wanted to, you know, own rental properties. I always loved that. But if it wasn't for you. Like I wouldn't have gotten into it. I probably would have still had excuse after excuse on why I can't do it or why I'm not doing it. But, you know, I just, I, I'd say it's luck and the people around you and opportunities, you know? So I, I appreciate you, you know, coming by, sharing this information with people and letting them know how you're basically able to build and expand your real estate empire and not even use your own money anymore. You know, it's like you could just keep growing and not have to use your money. It's impressive. Like, especially especially pulling money from one property to potentially buy four, that just shows the power of real estate. So, yeah. well, I mean, thanks. I appreciate like, it. One, one thing that I always tell people is buying the first one is the hard one because, oh, yeah. That, you know, and that's where breaking the small numbers down or breaking the large numbers down and small numbers comes into play. Uh, and, and timing, uh -huh. uh, timing always comes into play when it comes to real estate. But uh, definitely, you know, with, with that first one being the hard one is because you may not always have a mentor. Like you and I, we didn't have mentors. We learned as we yeah. you know, learned on our own. Um, and, and, and two, you know, that first one, like, unless you, I don't know, do some kind of deal where you could... Uh, have have a silent partner or uh, uh -huh. you know investors or something like that, then you're probably gonna have to buy it on your own. But everyone after that, every every home after that that you buy, 
that it comes so much easier. Yeah. And, then, so and, much. and then by then you also start learning or, or you start to have a better idea of what you're doing. Um, yeah. And also, you know, you, you build relationships with, you know, lenders, you build relationships with, uh, with, uh, with, the agents on the sales side, you know, with agents or, or yeah. brokers. It just uh, makes it much easier the second time around because you already got your whole team in place. Time and the third time around, and yeah, you know, it's like it, it becomes easy. You know? All right, <laughs> cool. Well, Vince, thanks again. I appreciate it, and um, I'm not gonna let you catch up to have more houses than me. <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, I think life is not a competition, but if I got more money than you, that's okay. Uh, I think I got more money than you. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, we, we always been like this competitive with each other, but it's good. It, it keeps us on our toes. So yeah, you you buying four this year, that means I need to buckle down and, you know, I need to add some more properties under my belt this year, you know, because you, you kind of catching up now. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, until next time. Peace.